Hi, it's Vex, and today we want to talk about my favorite deck, Sir Conrad. Like, wow, Vex, Sir Conrad came in Throne of Eldraine. No, you're right. But one of the very important cards from Sir Conrad just got reprinted. That's right, our friend Cabal Coffers. I still have the old one because I've had this deck for a while, but this is a good time to talk about Sir Conrad. And what Sir Conrad does is, let's read that, three black black. And the crazy part of it is it's an uncommon. It's extremely powerful uncommon in uh, Throne of Eldraine Limited and very powerful in EDH. Let's read this very, very confusing line of text. Whenever another creature dies, any creature dies, okay? So dies trigger. Or a creature card is put into the graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield. So any creature that slips into the graveyard... Um, except for Sir Conrad, of course, from anywhere. Uh, or a creature leaves your graveyard. So, leaving your graveyard. So, it's three things. Um, I know it's complicated. Sir Conrad Grim deals one damage to each opponent. So, let's talk about that. So, essentially, when any other creature other than Sir Conrad dies, uh, ping for one, all the opponents. When a creature is put in the graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, maybe from the library, you milled it, or uh, you discarded it, whatever. Uh, Sir Conrad deals one damage to each opponent. And then when a creature card leaves my graveyard or our graveyard, it deals one damage to each opponent. Wow, that's some damage dealing shenanigans. And Sir Conrad has an activated ability, one and a black. Each player mills the top card of their library. Um, this is a, uh, I think it has new text because it's been reprinted in a uh, commander deck, but I have the old Throne Eldrain one because, you know, I want to do OG original. So. The reason we have Cabal Coffers is because Sir Conrad, Conrad has an activated ability. So you put Sir Conrad onto the battlefield, right? Activate the ability a lot of times. Mill the opponents. The opponents have creatures. Deal damage to the opponents. And so on and so forth. So our commander has an insane mana sink. Oh, aside, don't forget your tokens. Always have tokens. I always like to say that because a lot of people don't have tokens, but always have your tokens. Anyways, back to the story. Cabal Coffers is a way to generate tons of mana. Sir Conrad has a mana sink, and the mana sink is also a win, part of the win condition because it triggers Sir Conrad's other ability here, dealing damage. So, usually we start with ramp last because ramp's not as important uh, for other decks. I mean, ramp's always important, but not as important as in this deck. This deck ramp's super important, so we're going to start off with ramp first. The biggest mana generator is Cabal Coffers right here, right? But you pair it with Or Orborg, of course. We are running a lot of swamps because we're a mono black deck, but you still compare um, pair with Orborg because you can turn Cabal Coffers itself into a swamp and counts itself. So this generates an obscene amount of mana with Orborg in play, right there. And you have your Orborg turn everything to swamps. Your next best card maybe Cabal Stronghold. It does cost even more to activate than Cabal Coffers and only counts basic swamps, but it's still as long as it generates, you know, five mana. Then, then you're positive. If it generates four, then you're even. So essentially, you have to have uh, five basic swamps out. But again, you're running mono black and you have tons of basic lands. You also have Crypt of Agadim as another way to generate tons of mana. Uh, two tap and one black for each uh, black creature card in your graveyard. So of course you're, you're milling yourself. So the more you mill, the more mana you can generate from Crypt of Crypt of Ag Agadim. Nykthos. Again, we want to generate more and more, more and more mana. This is a devotion land. So, tap, two tap, add, um, choose a color, add to your mana pool amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. Devotion to black. If Sir Conrad's on the battlefield, this adds two black mana, but you have to have more things. You have four, five, six, seven, eight. That's amazing. So, we have four cards that add more than one mana, can add more than one mana. So, helps with our. Our um, activated ability. They have Manscape Refractor, and it gains. Um, so, if you guys aren't familiar with this from Commander 2020, ETB is tapped. Again, it has all activated abilities of all lands on the battlefield, including your opponents, and including the activated ability of tap add. You know, if there's a swamp on the battlefield, add one black. It still it gets that activated ability. So, it gets all. It basically produces mana because everybody has lands that produce mana. Then you may spend mana as though we're. Um, man of any color to pay activation activation costs of manscape or refractors abilities. So 
The important part is we want to have play this, right? It comes with ETB's tap, unfortunately. Untap it. Then it has activated abilities of any of these cards if they're on the battlefield. Like a Cabal Coffers could be another Cabal Coffers. You add tons of mana. It is it itself is not a land, so you can't add, count it as a land with Orborg or whatever. Have Nykthos. You have a copy of Nykthos, Cabal Stronghold. I mean, if, if worst case, it could be a copy of your opponent's Strip Mine. You could Strip Mine something, stuff like that. We have another land that copies Vesuva right here. Of course, we want to copy our Cabal Coffers. If Cabal Coffers is not legendary, so you can copy that. Thespian Stage right there. So you just make a copy of any land on the battlefield, including your opponent's. You, you, you get the drift here. That's why we really want to make tons of mana with this deck. You have also Desert Temple. One tap, untap target land. So you can untap one of these lands, make more mana. Okay. So part of ramp packages are tutor package, Demonic Tutor. I'm going to be honest. Demonic Tutor searches for one of these pieces. Unless you're desperate for a board wipe, removal, or something, you're, you're searching for one of these lands. That's what Demonic Tutor is there for. You have Exhibition Map. Search one of these lands. You have other mana doublers that are not uh, lands. Uh, Nikana Rev Revenant. I can, I can never pronounce this one. Ner Nerkana Revenant. Doubles uh, taps. Uh, doubles your swamps. Crypt Gas gives you extort. Uh, a little slow drain helps with Conrad too, but doubles your swamp producing producers. Extra planar lens. Doubles your, uh, we're actually playing Snow Cover Swamp, so we would imprint Snow Cover Swamp, doubles the mana production there. Cage Sun doubles your um, mana production for black, of course. So those are the ways we get lands. We make tons of mana. See, as you can see, we have our ramp package. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 cards in the deck, just dedicated to just pumping out more more than one mana per land. They have, you know, some other um, ramp. Wayfarer's Bobble, of course. Psalm Simulacrum. This is good to, to sacrifice to because it's a creature. So it's really cool there. Burnish Heart has a sack outlet on itself. It's really good. And makes two lands. Myriad Landscape gets two lands. Soul Ring, of course. Arcane Signet. Jet Medallion here. All right. So we're moving on from our ramp package, which is like... A really thick package and, and, and we're not even not even in green that's how important ramp is in this deck all right let's slide the rest of the deck over here let's talk about our drain oops i just covered up our commander here where's our commander i think i put a commander somewhere there it is we just lost sir conrad in the mix here right there there's our commander our drain package sir conrad's not the only one that's doing sir conrad doesn't actually do draining it's just this group pinging but, you know, draining is fun. It's like aristocrat style. So we have drainers here. Right there, as in Blood Artist, the classical drainer. Only drains one player because it targets somebody. Zulpo Cutthroat. This targets, you know, it doesn't target, it hits everybody. Ayara, first of Locked Wayne. So this is the rare legendary next to the uncommon one. Could be a secondary commander. Um, black creatures like ETBs, drains. So it's good. And a sack outlet, too. Sack outlets are very good. This deck is all about, you know, moving cards around from battlefield to graveyard, graveyard back to battlefield, back to library. So just moving cards all around different zones. Bastion of Remembrance comes with a dude and does some draining. Gray Merchant of Asphodel. Of course, the Devotion Drain. That's good. Kakusho. This used to be banned as commander, and they uh, put it back. And it's, you know, it can be your commander. It, I mean, people are afraid of this because it, it does a um, uh, 30-point life swing. But it's not bad. It's pretty good. Drain. So those are drainers here. Help with Sir Conrad You know, deal with the opponent's life totals. Then we have some sack outlets. Of course, we want to move creatures from the battlefield to the graveyard. The Seer Seer is a good you know, one-man sack outlet. Woe, Woe Shrider. You know, sack a creature scry. And can also use your graveyard to um, escape. And when you escape creatures, it does trigger Conrad because it's um, cards cards getting removed from the graveyard. So it's pretty cool here. It comes with a dude to sack. Yog Moth, one of the best sack outlets out there. You get to put minus one, minus one counters on creatures and draw cards. Okay, so we have some graveyard recursion here, of course. Reassembling Skeleton is amazing because what you could do is you could sack Reassembling Skeleton to the Yog Moth. 
pay the one in the black, you know, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. So when you when reassembling skeleton dies, Sir Conrad triggers, but when you move it back to the battlefield, Sir Conrad triggers again. So you can get tons of triggers and you can sack it to Yawgmoth again for every two mana. You can keep doing that. So that's that's an amazing gra graveyard recursion there. Stinkweed Imp um, does the dredging and has a pseudo death touch right here. So the important part is to dredge five. Again, um, taking cards from your library to a graveyard does trigger Sir Conrad. So that's good right there. Another graveyard recursion is one of my favorite ones here and my favorite from Eldraine Limited. I did play a lot of Eldraine Limited, but it's still fun. Uh, Forever Young, one in black. Put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library, draw a card. So it's kind of like a raised dead, except if you take any number of creatures, say you have 20 creatures, which you, you probably only run 20, but let's say hypothetically you have 20. You take 20 from your graveyard, put it on top of your library in whatever order. That's 20 damage from Sir Conrad. That, that can just end games. Forever Young there. And then you get a draw a card on top of that. Um, Footbomb Feast is kind of like the same vein there, except for an instant. Grave Purge, same, same text, except for an instant as well. And then we have some um, more graveyard recursion. Tortured Existence. You know, choose and discard a creature card, return target creature card from graveyard to your hand. You can just um, essentially loop this with two creatures. Um, you would, for one black, you would uh, discard a creature, return another creature to your hand, which would uh, trigger Conrad twice. Once for the creature going to the graveyard, once for the creature leaving the graveyard. And then you keep looping it for one black each constantly. So that's pretty neat. Neat way to get things going, but you need two creatures because you can't target the creature you discarded because you need to target before you pay the, the cost. More graveyard shenanigans. Again, as, as I mentioned, always run graveyard hate. I mentioned that in so many deck texts, and this is so true. If I get hit with like a rest in peace or some kind of like graveyard hate mechanism, this deck is hard to, uh, um, it's, it's very hard to, to play. I mean, it's not impossible, but. You know, we need things to go into the graveyard. So Sir Conrad is definitely a graveyard deck. That's why I tell you always run graveyard hate because there will always be a deck doing something like that. All right, back to our graveyard recursion here. Chainer, Dementia, Master. So it's a really old card from, I think, Scourge or something. All Nightmares get plus one, plus one. We're not running any Nightmares. But Chainer says three black, pay three life. Put target creature card from a graveyard uh, onto a battlefield under your control. That creature is black and is a Nightmare addition to creature type. So it pops, buffs those creatures. Then when Chainer um, leaves the battlefield, uh, exile all nightmares. So it's really good re uh, graveyard recursion, resurrection, raise dead stuff. And then we've got another cool legendary, Belthar the Defiled. All minions get plus one, plus one. And the funny part is uh, Chainer is a minion, so Belthar will buff Chainer. It's kind of funny. Um, except for the cool part is three black, black, three, I mean, three black. Remove, um, so exile Balthar. Each player returns all black and red creatures uh, from the graveyard to the battlefield. So, gets all your black creatures, sweeps them out of the graveyard, puts them onto the battlefield. Really good. It does do your opponents, but, um, you know, uh, your opponent's stuff leaving the graveyard does not trigger Sir Conrad. So, you got to watch out for this. It might not be the best play, but it's a really cool play. Micaeus the Unhallowed gives your humans... Um, Non-humans, I mean, Undying. We're placing a bunch of non-humans right here. Got a zombie, got a minion here. Chanting Chair might be a human. Got to check the uh, uh, gatherer on that. Essentially, they have Undying, so they can go to a graveyard. Um, undying will trigger, bring it back. So you get two triggers, one for dying, one for coming back. So Micaeus is really cool. Then we have Dread Return. Again, it's actually a sack outlet, too. Return target creature card from a graveyard to a battlefield. And that's flashback, sack three creatures. So it's a sack outlet, brings things back from the graveyard. Very good. Uh, triggers Conrad three times if you play the fastback cost. Wake the Dead. This is a very cool card. I really like playing this card. X Black Black. Uh, it's kind of like a niche card. Not a lot of people know what it does, but you only cast it during combat on an opponent's turn. So you can do it before blockers, after blockers, uh, you know, whenever. It's not, essentially, it's just only during your combat um, phase. Return X target creature cards from the graveyard to the battlefield. Sacrifice those creatures at the beginning of next end step. So essentially, we're just bringing things back. Um, trigger Conrad when, when you bring it back. Sack them. Again, trigger Conrad when they die. And do like a surprise block. So it's really cool there. Agadine's Awakening. I love this modal double face card. It's good in most black decks. But in Conrad, it's, it's really amazing because you want to bring stuff back again. Rise of the Dark Realms. Now this gets 
well, now this really, really is insane because you're milling things and then you just like, I want it all. I want it all back. As you saw, Post Malone used Rise of the Dark Realms. That was insane. Living Death. Again, you know, swap creatures in graveyards. It's kind of like Living End. Several actually has a mini man, like mana cost. Uh, I've been got with this card because, you know, I play against graveyard decks. My play group sometimes plays some graveyard decks, and I was like, man, I don't want Living Death. They have more creatures than I do. So this is sometimes a double edged sword if you get in the wrong pod, but still good. Doom Whisper right here. Um, again, this deck is chock full of things, move things around from the graveyard to the graveyard to the battlefield. Doom Whispers, pay two, surveil two. So that's an important part. You keep on just moving things right to your graveyard from your library for two life. And if you're, you know, draining right here and you're gaining life, Doom Whisper can, you know, just, just mill cards super fast. So that's really good. Speaking of mill, right here we have Mesmeric Orb. Straight up mill card, right in the brew, right, right from the Ruvac deck, right there. Mind Crank, this is insane, this deck. Okay, so there's actually like a mini combo. It's not like an infinite combo, but mini combo. And let me read what it does, two, two colorless, two generic, I should say. And opponent loses life. Whenever opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of their library onto, uh, into their graveyard. So, let me just clear this out and show you how this works. Da -da -da. Let's use some creatures, for example, here. Clear this right out here. Let's say this is my library right here. Or somebody else, you're my opponent's library, right? They take one damage from Conrad from something dying. They mill, right? Triggers Conrad again from something dying. They mill, right? And then what happens is Conrad deals damage to each opponent. So each opponent will mill. And if there's, you know, uh, take, they take one. Then they, let's say they each mill a creature card. Then Conrad will trigger three times. Then you mind crank. You, you keep looping. And maybe you can get into a loop where they have tons of creatures and they all just die. So that's what Mind Crank does. It's a very important card. Don't, I mean, I would Demonic Tutor for this card if I have a bunch of mana and the combo on board. So this is the exception to the Demonic Tutor rule. If I need that. So Mind Crank is extremely, extremely good at milling and killing with Sir Conrad on the board. Perpetual Timepiece. Again, you know, two mana. It has a tap. You don't pay mana. Put top two cards of your of your library into a graveyard, so hopefully you hit a creature, trigger Sir Conrad. Of course, you could exile <clears throat> Perpetual Timepiece, shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard on, into your library, trigger Sir Conrad again. This is a really cool one. It's an old card from, I think, Judgment or something. More Morality Shift. So it does cost seven mana. It is a hefty price, but you, of course you're, you're playing a lot of mana. Exchange your graveyard and library, then shuffle. So it'll trigger Sir Conrad from all your, all your creatures leaving your graveyard into your library and for all the creatures coming from your library into your graveyard. So this basically triggers for the number of creatures you have in your, you know, that are not on the battlefield in your deck. There. Then we have some removal, you know, the generic stuff that we need to have in the deck, but generic stuff tailored to uh, Sir Conrad. We have Fleshbag Marauder right here. ETB, each player sacks a creature. That's the classic one right there. Of course, very good with Conrad. Another Merciless Executioner, another one of those. Plague Crafter, another one of those. Demon's Disciple, another one of those. I feel like um, DJ Khaled, another one. Anyways, back to the removal suite, Feet of Swarm. They're wearing mono black. There might be some problematic enchantments. This is the only way to deal with them. It is what it is. That's what we get for playing mono colored. We got perfect mana, except for we have not the best set of cards to deal with things. Toxic Deluge are my favorite removal spells. I'm glad they reprinted in Double Masters because I think this is almost an auto include in every black deck. Even five color black deck, Toxic Deluge is such a good removal spell. So efficient. Blood in the Snow, I mentioned we are playing snow covered lands. And this is cool, you get to choose one. And usually it's destroy all creatures. That's how it works. Then, re then the cool part is then return a creature or planeswalker card with convert mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast this spell. So it does uh, bring a creature back, so it's really cool. It could bring Conrad back if you just let Conrad go to a graveyard. Actually, I think when the new death rolls, you you don't actually Con Conrad goes to a graveyard no matter what, and then then the then the spell's still resolving and would bring Con Conrad back, and no one can do anything about Conrad going to graveyard. Uh, they can't search or extract. So just remember that combo too. It could happen. Deadly Tempest, cool part. Destroy all creatures. 
and then each player loses life equals the number of creatures they control that restore this way again more more draining people love token decks so this is very good against those token decks all is dust uh you know sometimes you guys just gotta destroy permits so this is another way besides feed the swarm destroy you know uh, enchantments except for it just destroys everything uh it does destroy colored artifacts too then we have some uh miscellaneous cards card draw here callous blood mage as i remember as i mentioned graveyard hates very good uh the important part is exile target player's graveyard etb you get to choose one of those um other things you could you know draw a card lose a life or make a little pest token the important part is it is graveyard hate and we do a lot of recursion so it's Really good in our deck right there. I really like this new Strixhaven Rare. Uh, more card draw, Grim Horror Specs. Uh, when a non token creature dies, draw a card. Midnight Reaper, essentially the same. Regular card draw, Midnight uh, Knight's Whisper, Sign in Blood. Uh, Sign in Blood can kill somebody if they're at two life. Uh, just remember that. That has happened. I've seen it on game nights. It does happen. Uh, Funeral Rites. This is a cool card. You know, draw two cards, lose two life, and put top two cards of your library into graveyards and mill two cards. Bolus of Citadel. We're playing Mono Black. This is super fun. We are doing some uh, some life gain here and there. Not a lot, but Bolus of Citadel is really good. Let you sack ten non-land permits. Drain drain the rest ten life if necessary. Uh, card advantage card. I don't consider a card draw, but it's very highly card advantage because it just either removal magnet or just generates you uh, free spells. One or archaic. Extremely good. Uh, some token generators. Nah, we don't have a lot of token generators, but I think this is really fun. A born like Overlord, you know, not a lot of people know what this does. So flying ETBs generate number of one one black harpy creatures with flying. So the harpy flying harpies uh, equal to a devotion to black. You get your upkeep sack, sack a creature. So it's like a slow sack outlet. It makes tons of creatures. It's flying, so it can do some damage. So it's really fun there. Tormon the Desecrator. So Tormon is a new card from Commander Legends. It's when one or more cards leave your graveyard. So mentioning putting back on your library, leaving your graveyard, putting back in the battlefield. You uh, create a tap 2-2 black zombie creature token, Tormon. And I totally forgot to say in the beginning of the video, but this deck is heavily inspired by uh, Joey Schultz. is a deck from uh, the EH Rec cast. I'll put a link to his deck in the description below so you guys can look at it. But I, I watched him play this deck a lot, and I was like, you know, I need to build this deck. I need to build this deck. The deck's amazing. And you know what? It doesn't disappoint. It's super fun. Uh, then we have some protection spells, lightning greaves, swift of boots. Got to protect your commander. Your commander is very important because the, your whole plan revolves around having the commander on the battlefield. So you got to protect it somehow. We have some utility lands here, but Jugabog always have it in any black deck, which is Kaja, which is cottage. You know, it, the kind of cool part is. Uh, and what ETBs, you know, you may put target creature from graveyard on top of your library. So it's kind of like the Mystic Sanctuary version of creatures, except for Mystic Sanctuary is insane. Which is kind of just very good in this deck, too. So you get creature back. And uh, you're playing tons of swamps. Speaking of swamps, got all these snow cover swamps from Modern Horizons, the original one. Right there. I actually built this deck before Modern uh, Kaldheim came out, so I had these lands here. Anyways, this is the deck. I absolutely love this deck. I love draining. I love getting bullets to see old people going out. I just love playing the aristocrats. It's just all amazing. And I hope you enjoy this deck tech too. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You know, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted when I have new videos. And right now, we're going to shuffle it up and do like a little gold fishing like we always do. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Remember, this deck is a grindy deck. You're not there there is no I mean there is a combo win with mind crank, but besides that. This deck takes time. Our commander is 5 CMC. So let's uh, do a quick hand and see what we get. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Boom. Okay. Now remember, big mana. Big mana. It's all about big mana. Let's see what we got. Okay, we got a little combo piece, Tortured Existence. Orborg, that's one half of our Cabal Coffers combo. Vizier Seer. Nice sock outlet. Grim Horseback's card draw. Okay. We could do that. So we could play Tortured Existence. Vizier, Seer, and Grim Horse. Like, this is like a mini combo. You could play your creature, sack it to Vizier, Seer, um, draw a card. No, not draw. Yeah, draw a card with Grim Horse Specs. And then hopefully discard, do these things. Discard, discard. And maybe be able to draw a card, get a creature in the graveyard, play it, stuff like that. Anyways, enough rambling. Let's see what we got. This is good. This half our combo. Swift of Boots is good. Not really necessary right now, but it's good. 
So let's see, draw a card, more lands. We always love lands. Play our Swamp, we play our Orbor Glass because we don't give people black mana quite yet. It doesn't really help us because all we have is black mana. Um, question is, what do you want to play first, Torch of Existence or Vasir Seer? We'll play the creature that attacks, you know. We are doing draining, slow drain, so you know, attacking for one does count in this deck. Turn two, too bad we didn't get acceleration though. Getting like a two mana rock would be nice, but oh well. Cage Sun, that's acceleration, we cost six mana, that's a lot. So we'll just play our Swamp. We don't need Torch of Existence because we're not doing anything with it. Uh, we can't even target a creature in a graveyard. Cause, I mean, I guess we can sack the Seer Seer to itself and then target itself, but that's not what, that's not what we're doing here. All right, we'll do Swift with Boots. Put that on here. Attack for one. Does that's, that's what we do. You got to attack for one. Usually in Commander games, I see people with a 1-1. One, one, they don't attack. You know, they don't really care about chip damage. But here, chip damage is very important. So attack. All right, turn three here. Solemn Simulacrum. Okay, that's that's some some ramp. Might ramp us to Cage Sun. So three mana here. We play a Grim Horror Specs. Just keep going on curve right there. We won't even, won't even morph it because it costs three anyways. I mean, we could morph it, but we're not going to. Then again, attack. Don't forget that. Somebody's probably ramping with green or something. They don't have defenses. Just keep keep pinging in there. It counts. Turn four. So this deck got to play a lot more than our usual six or seven turns because of the slow grind nature. More swamps. We don't mind. We love our lands. Again, we're saving Orbor for last. There's no reason to do it because, you know, our swamps are already swamps. So what we'll do is we'll tap four here. Play Psalm Simulacrum. We'll do that. We'll search. Finally do some ramping. Get in our swamp right there. If we get Cobalt Coffers, that'd be amazing. Right there. And now, now we can do some kind of loopage with Vizier Seer, uh, Psalm Simulacrum, Grim Horsebacks shenanigans. Vizier Seer is hexproof. I would keep that one with hexproof. It's important. Actually, there's, I forgot it doesn't auto equip. So no one is equipped. <laughs> it's not like the other boots, Lightning Greaves auto equips. Swift of Boots does require one to equip, so never mind, nothing's equipped. I know you guys are about yelling at me in the comments, like, that's, that's, that's not the auto-equipper one. Okay, so cut the deck here. Turn five. It's not, it's not the auto-equipper, Vex. All right, draw a card. Okay, another Swamp. We love it, we love it. Let's see what we want to do. All right, we could play Cage Sun, but we have, we do nothing. We could play Conrad. We do nothing. So what we'll do is we'll just sack our Psalm Simulacrum to Vasir Seer. We have two triggers, right? We have draw a card here and Psalm Simulacrum draw cards. Draw two cards. So one, two, perpetual time pieces. Time piece is pretty good. Okay, we'll play our like six land here. So the idea is you want to get more information before you start making choices. k Sun will be very good next turn, uh, this turn. So I think the setup is we'll do Cage Sun to set for next turn. Here, we'll just put this on the side right there, and it says enter the battle to choose color black, of course. Whenever lands ability adds one man, one more mana. Uh, a lands ability adds one or more mana of the chosen color to your mana pool. So only us, not not the opponent. Unlike the uh, extra player lens, which is the opponent if they have smoke uh, snow covered swamps. Turn six. Okay, so now we have double mana right there. Yeah, I always like reread re my cards just to make sure I know exactly what I'm doing. That's why I like having it in English. It doesn't force me to memorize exactly the text of the card. I know magic cards have like this nuanced text, maybe yours, theirs. Um, when lands tapped or when it adds mana, it's weird. All right, turn six here. Boom. All right, finally we'll play our board. We'll do it. Midnight Reaper, more card draw when things sack here. Okay. Let's do it. Let's just, you know, we came here to play our commander. We'll tap three, have one floating. Here. What else? We'll use that one floating for our Wayfarer's Bobble. There. We could uh, tap two here. Play a Perpetual Timepiece. We have six mana left over. We can play everything in our hand. We might as well do that. Let's tap four. We'll play this in Tortured Existence. We'll just put this next to Cage Sun right there. There. So we have everything, played everything in our hand. What we'll do is we'll just put the top two cards in our library, into our graveyard. Here, 
Vesuva, and Agadim's Awakening, okay? We could equip Swiftwood Boots to Sir Conrad. It's probably what we want to do as quick as possible. Right there. We didn't trigger any Sir Conrad triggers yet. Okay, we'll just go to our next turn, turn seven. Assuming no giant board wipe has happened, we are good to go here. We sure Wayfarers bobbled last turn, right? Do we have any mana? No, we didn't. Okay, so that's, that's okay. Equipping Swiftless Boots is more important than Wayfarers bobbling. So let's do here. Mana Escape Refactor, which does nothing. Because <laughs> we don't have, all we have is things that tap our black mana, so it is what it is. We can't use Torch Resistance because we don't have a um, card to discard. But we can always draw cards here. So let's just play Manscape Refactor. Comes to play tapped. Oops. Only taps. Uh, I have I still have an extra floating. What we could do is uh, Sack um, Midnight Reaper. Here, whenever non token creature control dies. So. Midnight Reaper will trigger itself with Grim Horse Specs. Draw two cards. Mind Crank. That's that's the combo we're talking about. Mortality Shift. Okay. This will trigger um, Conrad here. We still have one floating, so we still have one floating here. We'll play our Mind Crank here. This is another enchantment artifact. Deal. We still have one floating. So this is this is the combo here. So we so we did. We did luck out and got, got our little combo. What we'll do is we'll just mill one with Sir Conrad. Everybody, each player. That's not a creature, but if anybody has a creature, Mind Crank will uh, will hit. Then we'll just you know mill another one. Sir Conrad, not a creature. But again, if any opponents have creatures, Conrad will hit. We'll trigger, re-trigger Mind Mind Crank. Then you know we can always keep you know going on. That's a creature that will. Um, do opponent and opponent loses life. So each opponent loses life. That player puts puts a card. So each opponent each opponent lost a life. They mill each opponent will mill a card from Mind Crank for each three Ayara and for every card any creature card they put in. Then if you want, you can just tap it again. You know, do Sir Conrad's ability one more time. Not a creature, and then Mind Crank will go on and on, and it 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 might fizzle out. It might not, but you can always you know. Worst case, you're like, oh, just sack Grim Horse Specs here, draw a card. Um, this this triggers Sir Conrad right here, one on our kick. Here, we still have that one floating mana, right? Uh, from a long time ago, we could play Torture's Existence. We could put this one on our kick in the graveyard, pick up whatever, it doesn't even matter. Um, Ayara into our hand. That'll trigger Conrad again with Mind Crank. So that is the combo. This is, I believe that's the only combo here, but it's pretty cool. It's like we got we got a natural combo. We didn't even tour for it, so that's pretty neat. Anyways, if you enjoy this deck, if you enjoy the slow aristocrats burn style, you know, graveyard shenanigans deck, give this video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted when I have new videos. I have the deck list and TCG player affiliate link in the description below. And as always, have a wonderful day.